Today, we're going to explore a theory that changed how we see our planet. It's called the Continental Drift Theory. This idea was thought up by Alfred Wegener, a scientist way back in 1912. He looked at the world map and noticed something interesting. The continents, like Africa and South America, seemed like they could fit together just right, kind of like puzzle pieces. Wegener proposed that these continents were once joined in a giant supercontinent. He named this idea Continental Drift. Back then, people were skeptical. They couldn't imagine continents moving around. But Wegener had a point. He found fossils of the same plants and animals on continents oceans apart. How could that be unless the continents were once connected? This theory was a game changer. It led to the idea that Earth's surface isn't static. Instead, it's always moving, even though it's super slow. These movements have shaped our world over millions of years. And guess what? This brings us to an amazing part of Earth's history, when all the continents were together in one massive landmass. We're about to dive into the story of Pangaea, Earth's own giant supercontinent. Today's video is sponsored by Video CEOs, your solution for engaging video content. Say goodbye to boring videos. With Video CEOs, conveying your ideas is seamless and effective. Whether it's for education, entertainment, or conversions, our video subscription service ensures your message connects with your audience, no matter your industry. Visit videoceos.com to learn more. Now, let's get back to the content. So what was Pangaea like? This was a time when all the continents we know today were stuck together in one huge landmass. Think of it as a gigantic piece of Earth's crust that covered a lot of our planet. Pangaea wasn't just big, it was really big. It stretched from the North Pole all the way down to the South Pole. This supercontinent had a mix of landscapes. There were tall mountains, long rivers, and wide deserts. Since Pangaea was so huge, the weather and climate varied a lot. The center of Pangaea was probably very dry. It was far away from the ocean, which meant less rain. The coasts, though, would have been much wetter. Living in Pangaea meant dealing with different climates, depending on where you were. Near the edges, you'd find more plants and animals because of the ocean's influence. But in the middle, it was tougher for life to thrive due to the dry conditions. Pangaea was surrounded by one enormous ocean called Panthalassa. That's a pretty cool name, right? It means all sea in Greek. And here's something interesting. The supercontinent wasn't flat. It had its own valleys, peaks, and probably lots of unknown landscapes. Exploring Pangaea would have been an adventure with so many different places to see. Now let's move on to the creatures that called Pangaea home. Pangaea was home to some of the most fascinating creatures, especially the dinosaurs. These giant reptiles roamed the land and there were tons of different types. Some were huge, like the Brachiosaurus, which could reach up to 85 feet in length. Others were smaller but fast, like the Velociraptor. Imagine a creature that could run as fast as a car on the highway. That's how quick these little guys were. Dinosaurs came in all shapes and sizes, some with sharp teeth for eating meat, others with long necks for munching on leaves. Dinosaurs weren't the only reptiles around. There were also flying reptiles, like pterosaurs. These creatures took to the skies of Pangaea, soaring over forests and mountains. Their wingspans could be massive, some as large as a small airplane. And then there were marine reptiles like plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, swimming in the vast ocean around Pangaea. They were the rulers of the sea, just as dinosaurs ruled the land. But it wasn't just about dinosaurs and reptiles. Pangaea saw the early days of mammals too. These early mammals were mostly small, about the size of a modern rat or squirrel. They were nocturnal, meaning they were active at night. This lifestyle probably helped them stay out of trouble, especially with so many hungry dinosaurs around. These little mammals were the ancestors of all the mammals we know today, including us humans. Birds started showing up during the Pangaea era too. The first birds were a bit different from the ones we see now. They had feathers, but many still had teeth and long bony tails. Archaeopteryx is a famous example. It's often called the first bird, and it's a mix between a dinosaur and a modern bird. It could fly, but not as well as birds today. Let's not forget about the plants. Pangaea had a rich variety of plant life. There were huge ferns and early conifers, which are like the pine trees we have now. These plants formed dense forests in some parts of Pangaea. In drier areas, there were different kinds of plants that could survive with less water. The variety of plants meant there was plenty of food for herbivores, the plant-eating dinosaurs. The climate on Pangaea affected where different plants could grow. 
Near the coasts, where it was wetter, you'd find lush forests. In the interior, where it was drier, the plant life was more sparse. This variety in plant life helped create different habitats for various types of creatures. Creatures on Pangaea had to adapt to survive. Some dinosaurs developed long necks to reach high leaves, while others had strong legs for running fast. The environment played a big part in these adaptations. For example, in the dry central areas, creatures needed to find ways to survive with less water. This could mean developing tough skin to retain moisture, or finding clever ways to hunt or forage for food. Marine reptiles adapted to life in the ocean. They had flippers for swimming, and streamlined bodies for moving through the water quickly. These adaptations helped them catch fish and other sea creatures for food. Flying reptiles had lightweight bones and large wings, which helped them stay up in the air. They could glide over long distances, searching for food or escaping predators. Life on Pangaea was always changing. As the continents moved, climates shifted, and creatures had to adapt or move to new areas. Some species thrived, while others couldn't keep up and went extinct. This constant change was a big part of life on Pangaea. It's what led to the great diversity of creatures we see in the fossil record. The separation of Pangaea eventually led to even more changes. As continents drifted apart, animals and plants found themselves in new environments. This led to the evolution of new species. It's amazing to think how the movement of land could have such a big impact on life on Earth. All right, let's talk about how Pangaea split up. It's like breaking a giant cookie into pieces. Each piece drifted away to form the continents we know today. This didn't happen quickly though. It was a super slow process, taking millions of years. The Earth's surface is made up of big plates that float on molten rock. Think of them like rafts on a lake. The breakup of Pangaea started around 175 million years ago. First, a big crack appeared in the supercontinent. This crack got wider, filled with water, and eventually became the Atlantic Ocean. The land on either side of this new ocean became separate continents. That's how we ended up with Africa, the Americas, Europe, and so on. So, the breakup of Pangaea really reshaped our planet. It's why Earth looks the way it does today. Isn't it wild how something that happened so long ago still affects us now? This big change created the world map as we know it today. It's pretty amazing to think how our planet has evolved over millions of years, leading to the places we live in now.